Welcome to this overview of PXF Time Merge version 1.1. Before we get into a full setup from scratch, let's look at the new features available in version 1.1. So the first new feature we have is under the operation knob here, we have a new mode called average. This averages all the frames together. This is similar, of course, to the time echo node when set to the average mode. We also have a new uh, fade out feature. So if we enable fade out here on the right, the frames will get progressively more and more transparent or less and less opaque as we move away from the current frame. So if we have a lot of frames here, you can see that they become more and more transparent as we go away from our current frame. You can make the effect more or less uh, obvious with the fade gamma. So if we increase the fade gamma, then the fade out is less aggressive. If we lower the fade gamma, then the fade out is more aggressive. Another new feature is effect only. Now, if we enable effect only, this will remove the current frame and only leave the time trail. This is useful if you want to do other things to your time trail, like blur it or glow it or grade it or something. And then you want to add the current frame on top yourself later with a merge, for example. So now we can disable the current frame with effect only. So these are the new features of version 1.1. Now let's look at the uh, full setup from scratch for beginners. Okay, here I have a clip of uh, snow falling in front of a forest and I want to get rid of the snow and keep only the trees in the background. Typically you would do this type of task by blending multiple frames together Painting out each snowflake by hand would be too time consuming. To blend frames together, we have uh, a few tools built into Nuke. We have the Time Echo node that looks like this. And Time Echo is fairly limited. Uh, we only have three modes. We have Plus to add all the frames together, Max to max the frames together, and Average to average the frames together. And you can of course specify how many frames you want to blend together. So that's uh, fine, but it, there, no mode in here will get rid of the snow. Average is the closest. Uh, if we put a lot of frames in the average, we kind of get rid of the snow, but we can still see the streaks. And the other big problem with the time echo node is if we uh, go to the beginning, for example, of our clip, the average doesn't work because we don't have any control of whether or not we want to use frames from the past or the future. The time echo node always uses frames from the past so at the beginning there's no frames before frame one to average so that's a problem so it's fairly limited all right so let's look at another option built into nuke that's time blur so again we could uh, decide how many frames we want so if we want more frames we could do this and now we have the option to uh, use start end and centered offset so that way we could use frames from the past or the future or both that's fine but we're still limited to a average blend mode there's no way to use other modes like over under uh, plus uh, min max and so on so we're still stuck there's uh, no option here that gives us exactly what we want so that's why we're going to use a pxf time merge so let's get one from the pixel fudger menu PXF time merge. I'm going to connect the image input here. So here I have my time merge. Let's uh, change the operation to average. So that will look uh, similar to my time echo. So if I change my offset to end, now I have exactly the same result as the time echo. So we didn't gain much here, but we do have more flexibility. So unlike time echo, I can pick whether I want to use uh, centered start or end offset so that's one benefit compared to time echo is we can pick our offset but the main benefit is having more operations here so unlike time echo i can choose between uh, over under min max plus from divide and multiply so in our case we want to min the frames together so that's getting rid of the snow pretty well i can see a little bit of snow still but i could add more frames in the mix let's say 15 frames instead of five and now I have a very good clean plate. And notice that the first frame is good as well because on frame one, I'm using seven frames from the future in my min. 
So that works and that will work at the end also. At the end, I'm gonna use seven frames from the past and anywhere in the middle, I'm using seven frames from the past and seven frames from the future. So this gives me a very good clean plate without any trace of the snow. So if my goal was to just get the trees, I'm done. But often you would wanna do this to be able to extract the snow. So now we could use a regular merge node, set it to from to do a subtraction and subtract the clean plate from the original uh, clip. And now I have extracted the snow fairly decently. I mean, as far as possible with this type of footage. So now I have two things. I have the clean background and I have the snow. So I can choose to put something in between if I want. So if I do something like this, for example, I have my uh, background that I remove the snow. I can put something on top of that like so, and I could add the snow that we've extracted on top with a plus, like so. And now I have the trees in the background, the color wheel in the middle, and the snow in the foreground. So without having to do any kind of luma keying or anything, I'm able to do a reasonable extraction of the snow and put something in between the snow and the trees, all thanks to my clean plate that I did in a few seconds with PXF time merge in min. All right, let's have a look at another example here. So I have a character with an alpha channel, a pretty rough alpha channel. So I could use a PXF time merge, put it in here like so. I want only frames from the past. I want the trail to be behind the character. So I'm gonna use the end mode. And if I increase the number of frames here, you could see that frames be from the past get added underneath because I'm in under mode. But since the character is moving very slowly, there's very little difference between each frame. So they all stack on top of each other. So for that, we have the frame skip feature. So let's uh, lower our number here to 10 frames, but instead of being spaced all one frame apart, we'll use the frame skip. So now we're two frames apart and now 10 frames apart. And if I keep going, let's say 20 frames apart. So now each uh, character is delayed 20 frames compared to the next one. And they're all stacked on top of each other using under. So our current frame is at the top of the stack. Then the next, uh, iteration is under our current frame and this guy is under this guy and so on so this is frames uh, the current frame this is 20 frames in the past 40 60 80 and so on so let's have a look in motion this is giving us a trippy time trail effect with uh, a bunch of clones all following each other so that's another way to use pxf time merge now let's look at this example to understand every control and knob in the PXF time merge. So I'm going to create a fresh uh, time merge connected to our uh, clip here. So this is a simple animated image and each uh, frame has the frame number in the ball. So it's easier to understand what's going on. So if we look here, this is our current frame, frame 20, and we are looking at five frames total, two frames before and two frames in the future, 21 and 22. If I change the operation, let's say to over, now our previous and next frames are on top. If I change it to average, I get an average of all the frames, uh, plus adds all the frames together, max maxes the frames together. So this is the same as the regular merge node. So you're doing uh, multiple merges on top of each other. Let's go back to under. We also have how many frames we want to include in our uh, comp here. So if I increase the number, now I've got five frames before and five frames after. So that's 10 plus the current frame, that's 11. So that's where 11 comes from. And we've got the frame range indicator here telling me that I'm looking at five frames in the past and five frames in the future. If I want to uh, only look at frames from the past or the future, I use the offset feature. So if I pick start, I'm going to get 
frames from the future so uh, the trail is going to start at the current frame if i pick end the trail is going to end at the current frame so only frames from the past and if i choose centered i get two in the past and two in the future if i want to skip some frames i can use the frame skip uh, feature so now i'm looking at the every frame uh, behind the current frame if i set it to two three four five for example now i'm looking at every five frames in the past so the current frame five frames in the past and then 10 frames and then 15 frames and then 20 frames in the past here and the frame range here shows me the furthest frame is frame minus 20 so 20 frames in the past another feature we have is fade out so if we choose fade out it's going to fade the frames as they move from the away from the current frame and we have fade gamma to make the fade out more or less aggressive we have effect only to disable the current frame and we have mix to go back to our original frame so if mix is zero we have our original clip mix one is our full effect and of course we can have anything in between just like any mix knob in nuke and finally we have the mask knob to limit the effect only to some area of the frame if we have an alpha channel in our mask input so there you go that was an overview of pxf time merge i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video goodbye